We come to you with some up-and-coming hip-hop artists tearing up the mic all over Albuquerque. Music Made is on the day with Gilly Soul and The Real KB. This power couple has gone through adversity to create a business machine, and they're only getting bigger and playing more shows. Check out their music on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash Gilly dash soul. And look up Music Made on Facebook to check out all the upcoming shows they have. They're going to be crazy active in 2018. We launched a merch shop at shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash APOB media. So if you guys want to get some sort of a exclusive wicked looking sweater, t-shirt, sporting some of that APOB love, that's shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash APOB media. And last but not least, to take care of our lovely listeners out there, uh, we've got an exclusive track for you from uh, the Music Made uh, power couple there after the podcast. So hang out for that and, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Peace and love. Welcome to episode 11, Perch of Birds podcast. Uh, we got KB and we got Gilly Soul. What's going on? What's going on? Hello. So uh, wanted to see if we could uh, touch base with some up and coming musicians in New Mexico. What do you, what do you guys uh, specialize in? What is, your, what is your genre of music? Hip hop. Everything, bro. <laughs> Everything. Versatile. Yeah, for sure. Lots of, our new pro- lots of our new projects. I don't know if that makes sense, but a lot of our new projects are coming out. They're going to be pretty different than what. Well, I've done. What do you guys uh what do you guys foresee yourselves as in the future? You guys looking to do something that's on your own or this collaborative effort? You guys are part of what group? Uh well collabs for sure. Yeah, that's 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 what we like to do. It's music but, made, right? Yeah, we're yeah. music made entertainment, but eventually we wanna, you know, bring new artists on, you know, to do what we love as well. You know what I mean? And have um just a variety of, of different hip hoppers. You know, just a lot of shit, bro. Like, can't really explain it. There's too much, bro. So when you guys when you guys get together with Music Made, how many musicians are you? Uh, well, right now we're starting out. We're just trying to cover our basics and get our strong foundation. So as at the moment, it's just Gilly Soul, who is the founder and CEO of Music Made, and I am again KB, and I'm the vice president and also a talent scout. So at the moment, we're just starting out with that. We have another artist. He is honing his craft at the moment. His name is Confident, and he's also focusing on our merchandise side. So he's creating all of our shirts. Yeah, if you could, yeah. So we're going to get our team strong and ready to go before we start including others. But collaborations for sure. But as far as adding on to the team, not right now. Okay. So I, I thought there was more of you guys than that. So that's pretty awesome because you guys are making motions. I've seen you guys doing a lot of stuff at yeah. shows. And Hell yeah. You guys are starting to play bigger venues. What's the, what's the most recent big venue you guys have played or one that you're proud of? Um, We did uh, the... The most recent was the launch pad, and we took second. Um, it was fun. There was, was uh, a about eight artists that were performing in a competition, you know. So it was it was a good turnout. And we have another mic club, February eighth. Yeah, that's on a Thursday. Give me give me some more closer. Are you gonna have more sh- uh, dates that are coming up constantly, like end of February. Yes. Yeah, so February first, I have a show. It's going to be at the Moonlight Lounge. Well, we may, I don't know if we'll let's see. We'll, we'll, this will be out before then. This should make it out before then. Hopefully, we try not to date them too much. Let's so get, get it. Let's so, get it. Rolling. So where can we find where can we find all of your your tour dates if we wanted to look and be like, oh damn, this came out. So you can go there. on to Facebook.com and type in the Chosen Ones. You'll see the Music Made logo. It'll also say Music Made Entertainment underneath the Chosen Ones. And there we'll be putting all of our merchandise that'll be for sale, all of our upcoming shows, times, dates. Um, we'll also be putting out competitions. We're doing giveaways. We have a lot yeah. in store. So for the we got the Easy E or the little Easy E show coming up um March seventeenth. Um we're thinking of um, you know, giving back to the community. So we're thinking of, you know, having a sale on our shirts and you know, they buy a shirt and we'll give a ticket free. You know what I mean? Give back to the people, especially the ones that are like, there's a lot of support going around and it's awesome. So we like to do um, a lot of stuff for, for the people. You know what I mean? So so differentiate a little bit. What's the difference between Music Made and Chosen Ones? 
Well, when honestly, when we tried making the Music Made page um, for the name, it would not allow us to make one under Music Made. Yeah, they said Music so, Made wasn't like you couldn't so, use it as a name. They said your childhood name, bro. Like, yeah, so we had to, weird. but it would allow us to put the chosen ones. And that was just something he came up with on the fly. Yeah. Um, ended up working out. We liked the way it sounded. So there is no but, difference. It's just Facebook was being, you know. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just annoying. Music Made. Yeah, <laughs> like, we just go by the Music Made. But like chosen ones is like we are the chosen ones. Music is definitely our gift, and that's kind of like why it that's came up that to that. Yeah, from, yeah, exactly. So chosen ones and music made is pretty much the same entity. Pretty it is much. the yeah, same entity. But music made is kind of like your philosophy. Yeah, um, it's music se. made me. I am music made. Music made entertainment is just something fun, and it's just meaning you know enjoy music, enjoy what you do, enjoy your time, you know, because you have to put a lot of effort into it. So. That's why we say music made me. I am music made because, like you said, it's our gift. So I know Gilly from we were in a band together. Yeah, a few years back in uh, Fixius. Fixius, bro. <laughs> back at you can find it on MySpace. I don't even know how to spell yeah, it. Yeah, MySpace. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's still yeah. there. Yeah. I actually uh, brought some <laughs> shit or showed her an old clip of us at the lo- or the compound at the time. Yeah, the, the compound. Yeah, bro. And yeah. she was like, "You had long hair." Yeah. You know what I mean, I was like, "That's spider, my trait, dude." Spider it's, up there, bro, with his yeah. long hair. Uh-huh. It's all gone now. Yeah. So uh, we were—I think we were talking a little bit about you know the history of uh, um, Gilly and uh, all right, you know, Kristen, so. and just how you guys kind of got to this point, you know? Oh yeah, okay. So I started doing hip hop when um, when we when our band broke up when it was like what sophomore year, probably I would say. Um, I just wanted to just give people a little bit more about me, bro. You know what I mean? Myself, my life, and instead of being. You know, playing guitar, I just wanted my voice to be heard. I want to change people's life. And you just like, one day woke up and were like, fucking. I'm a I just, fucking I'm, right, bro. Hip-hop, but but hip hop, right? Like that's just <laughs> yeah. such a, but it's not, to me, it's not too far um, from the source because I think they both have the same kind of message, you know, with like metal and hip hop. Like it's, it's very much uh, extremes, I guess, but yeah. not anymore. Hip hop's mainstream as fuck, dude. So For sure, yeah. if anything, I think that you have at least more uh, malleability, like you, your, your same message can be spread across different demographics bro because i mean it's crazy to see some of the people that listen to hip-hop compared to metalheads you know you yeah. kind of either are or you're not with metal you know but with hip-hop it's like oh yeah 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 i like uh i like some biggie you know like they oh, there's I something somewhere down the chain that that was yeah. big you know what i mean oh, yeah. what's cool is that somebody who likes pantera knows who tupac is yeah that's yeah. where the cool dude <laughs> and, and pantera is like one of my biggest inspirations bro and For that's sure. like it's crazy you know i never so is that how you guys met yeah um she had a she had a pantera shirt he had a biggie shirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> actually like i was wearing an archie the grouch or oscar the grouch t-shirt on a video that was going around on facebook um i was i worked with a bunch of different producers um before i met him and one of them ended up knowing him and he yeah. was like hey i got this guy i get you guys would sound great on a song together let's go meet and i was like all right but I didn't know that he already saw my video. And so, yeah, I went over to his house and I kind of never left. Yeah, and yeah. four years she was later. stuck, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out on certain visuals for sure. That's my boy. Um, Anyways, yeah. So he put out a video about, you know, her rap. And I thought it was just like a viral video. I was chilling with my homies and shit. And I was like, y'all come in here. Check out, check out this girl. She's dope. Like, she could spit. Find out she could, she's like she's from Albuquerque, and I was like, no way! Like I do this fucking music, and she does it like what a dream come true type shit. You know what I mean? So I tried, I reached out to her, and she was like, uh, she's like, you're like, nah, like I don't really, um, no type shit. But like you know, eventually she came over. Um, we just we just clicked ever since, bro. And now we're doing shows. What you're saying was you were stalking her and trying to slide into yeah, the DMs. Yeah, bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what you're saying? No, I'm fucking just weirdo. Though. I'm just fucking. Yeah. I'm just fucking. Nah, but I knew shit. We were gonna get like it's gonna. It was gonna happen, bro. Like no doubt. <laughs> so so initially, you guys just tried to start recording together, and that yeah. was that was what kind of started you guys. Uh, uh, I mean, yeah, the very first night that I went over, uh, myself, Gilbert, and Doja. He was a part of Music Made back in the day. Shout out to him. Yeah, for sure. And um, that one night, you know, they were like, we've been working on this song called Crazy. We want you on it. And I was like, all right, I have this verse I've been sitting on for months. Yeah. And I put it and it was just seamless. Yeah. It was perfect. It went together. Yeah, we put that cool. song, recorded everything and put it out that same night. And after that, it was just like, yeah, she you just know, came. I'm not going to, I'm not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> she just came in and fucking killed that shit. I was like, damn. <laughs> 
<laughs> how, how did you come into the music industry yourself? Uh, just always wanted to write. I was always entering myself into like poetry competitions and doing the spoken word stuff. And um, I, when I was 18, family drama, yada, yada. And I ended up living in my car for like a little over a year and a half and, you know, bouncing around from wherever I could. And that's like where I really started to put it because it was more of an emotional release, you know, like this sucks. I'm here in this situation. I got nothing. And it was my outlet. And after that, I just got more into it, practiced everywhere I could. And yeah. And then to this. I don't know, to this day, like it's just something that I want and it's something that I've always wanted. You know, I was little, I would lock myself in my room and jam out with my headphones and I would picture myself standing on a stage in front of just an on, you know, a countless yeah. amount of people and I can see it and I can, I, I could see it and I want it and I could feel it. And I just know that if I keep pushing and we keep pushing and, and we do, and, and we do what we need to, that there's a definite future in this for us yeah. and I can't wait. That's really cool. It, it transfers to your music because you're both very passionate for about your music and your, and your, and your lyrics and stuff. What I thought was really cool is that because you could tell that your voice transfers well when you sing too. So you always wanted to sing or is that just kind of an added bonus? Because not everybody that can rap can sing. Not everybody that can sing can rap. Oh, so I, I thought that was an added bonus to you and your and your music and how you can go well, back thanks. and forth. Thanks. That's that was, nice to hear. Yeah. Well put. Yeah, it was. Thank you. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, no, I've definitely always wanted to be a singer. I mean, I'm not as good as I wish that I could be, but I could carry a tune and I don't know. I do, I do think that it adds a different, you know, dimension to the song. You know, most people will get others to do their hooks and everything. And right. it's just fun that I can do my own and I can really portray and my message that I'm trying to put out. And it just is more clear because it's a full circle. Um, but yeah, I just think it's an, add, an added bonus. Well, I thought it was cool. I was going through you guys' SoundCloud catalog and I listened to every one of your songs on both your SoundCloud accounts. Cool. Is there any more than that or is that your pretty much your whole... That's... That's what we have yeah. for so now, far. but I mean, we that's have so things nice. that we're currently working on. Okay, but it's all about timing, and we're just sure we're just trying to put it out. Well, if you give everybody moment. you got, you know, that's something you got to be mysterious somehow. You gotta can't give that. everything away. That's sure. how you burn out. I so, got some stuff I'm holding on. the one thing I wanted to bring up um, is I was listening to a couple of your songs, and like I said, the singing. I I wish I brought my notes with me. I forgot, but the song uh, "Hazy Days." When you when I that song came on and it started going into the tune. It was almost like a jazz song. Yeah. It was super jazzy and funky. I dug the shit out of it. it was Thank you. Good. Yeah, that one's so much fun. I took my time on that. I wrote that and it took me a few months. Um, it was actually Evil, Evil, Evil Esque Studios with Jimmy Medina. So shout out to him. And he recorded that one for me. And I love the way that it turned out. But um, yeah, I just, that, that song was just a lot of fun for me to do. And it was different. And the whole thing, thing that I had in mind was like 50s blues like mm -hmm. I wanted yeah, I could, could picture myself could standing on the stage with the old mic you know yeah. like that's what I was going for it, it really stood out to me that one song I mean like all your songs are great yeah. for the both of you props to both of you for sure um, but that Thank one you. song stuck out <laughs> to me just because you know I like metal and, and reggae and rap and I listen to all kinds of different stuff but you know when you can take it back and it's kind of like I don't know it just it stu stood out to me it's a really cool song I dig it thanks thanks I like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think it's awful Burkenio. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's the way that those kind of songs come along. Because anymore, like, where else do you hear, like, the old school kind of beats put into the, the hip hop? You know, kind of West Coast still, don't get me wrong, but, you know, you just don't see it too much. So, yeah. so what do you guys plan on doing for, uh, an, I mean, I'm, I've seen uh, the SoundCloud stuff, but do you guys plan on putting out, like, a, like a hard album? Like, a. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We are in the process of working on our music made album. So that's, you know, obviously just going to be me and him and confident. And we're going to get that going. And then also... Yeah, be on the lookout for that. Um, Gilbert came up with a really good idea. And I think that uh, once we... Yeah, we'll, it, we'll, we'll get more into that like as it goes on. You know what I mean? So like... Stay tuned. Yeah, stay yeah. tuned for that. It's, it's so definitely... It's, so Facebook is, is awful, giving, easy for people to get to. Facebook.com forward slash for... for uh, is it Music Made? Uh, for the, the new one... Um, or is it chosen the new ones? profile is the chosen ones but it's yeah. with the double zero yeah like i said on the url i couldn't get like we would have been uh we would have put the music made 
so you could find it easier. But I, I think, guess it's I like, think just type in so that new, in the search bar. If you, you can just type it. in music made, it'll come up as the chosen ones. So I mean, you could type in the chosen ones, or you could type in music made. It'll take you to the same page. Yeah, there you go. So. Just look for the MME logo. Um. So okay. So so we've got we've got all these different points where you guys are actually making the music. You guys are putting down uh, t-shirts. You guys are actually creating a business out of this. What is the the fuel for the music what do you guys nowadays what do you guys mess with i mean I, I i live by the the creed that as you grow and you you get older i mean closing on 30 like as as i get problems i get better problems is always what i'm reaching for you know like you rise up to this next occasion so now you guys are doing what you're doing what do you guys use for the fuel that makes these songs like is the is the struggle as hard as you initially thought it was or is it you know what i mean like when when you're doing this stuff like does it do you still feel that that passion from then or do the problems that you're having now fuel some of that stuff like is there enough shit going on to where your songs are like fuck because I, I always wonder about like let's think about like eminem you know love when him. he was living in a trailer love you yeah <laughs> <laughs> right he's a god right but but you, you think about that it goes from the extremes what do you have to make music about you know and it's it's crazy to see him dip into stuff that's political and you know and 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 it's bigger than what he initially came to the table with so what do you guys use at this point now when you're writing songs and well you know as life changes your struggle changes like you were saying but yeah. so that kind of just pushes along the flow and what we're trying to talk about and the message so my message four years ago is definitely different than what it would be, be today because yeah. you had you had a life in a bottle right is that yeah what? life in a bottle okay yeah. so so talk to me what was going through your mind that looked like you put that together uh, fairly quickly yeah um okay. so this is I a mean, close snapshot. that was just something Oops. that you know like growing up uh i got into a little bit more like alcohol pretty you know deep and the people that surround me that really love me i kind of pushed away because <laughs> like you know i was mad and whatever just saying stupid shit when you don't mean and you drink and yeah um yeah i that one was really 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 special to me bro because like i I made a whole uh, 100% like change, bro, and and I'm a whole different person now, bro. Like I don't drink like I used to. Like I would drink just straight. Do you shots, feel healthier? Bro. Hell yeah. Do you? You know what I mean? Uh, I found that going to the gym and shit too is definitely like it makes things better, bro. It makes yeah. life better. You know, what dude. I, mean? I Planet Fitness that shit. I, I, I'll yeah, tell anybody. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care. How how feminine I look going in there, my purple, all my stuff, dude. Like I'll take selfies, I got purple all the equipment, you know. Flashy, yeah, yeah, yeah if you make any noise, they 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 honk at you with their little light, bro. <laughs> but you can't yeah, be twenty dollars a month, bro. I go every day. Just, nah, just I purely do the for fifteen, sake of... bro, cause like finding a council, cause uh, <laughs> Well, I work bro. out at two gyms, so they they tax you, bro. They're like, yeah. You gotta buy the twenty dollar package. That's sir, it. To come yeah, I know you, you work out over there, you can't work out over here. Damn like, <laughs> territory. <laughs> So, you you going over there? You can't come over here. So so my bad. I, I derailed the shit out of that. So life in a bottle. So so it, we're talking about drinking, and that's very introspective. Then yeah. so I mean, and, and stuff like that is what you stand on it. Do you write right there? Like you you feel yeah. this this wave come at you, and you just start doing it. Yes. In the car, everything. Fuck it. Yeah. Just start voice write, texting write, the Siri dude, and shit. I write when I'm working at work, bro. You know what I mean? Like I'm always constantly writing. Like I have my phone right here and my music jamming. So it's like I'm constantly always thinking of shit to write, bro. You know what I mean? So. When I was listening to Gilly's SoundCloud, I noticed a lot of reoccurring themes like um, like religious undertones, like a lot of God talk and demons uh -huh. and that kind of stuff. Do you find that your faith kind of helped you get where yeah, you're at? Yeah, for and sure. And it kind of helps you for with sure. your writing and stuff? Yeah, um, I definitely believe in um, God for sure. And uh, I believe that he's uh, helped me um, from, from, from a lot of stuff, bro. And it's like, he's amazing. People like, overlook him a lot and i know i know religion uh is like a hard topic to talk about and i really you know don't really like talking about it but um definitely think god helped me a lot bro and and i'm very blessed that he you know i had the people that i have to support me especially my woman right here you know what i mean Hello. she's been a big like help for sure you know what i mean and yeah dude like and with the religious thing i think it's important too because now more a days, it's like, it's something that's so on the hush hush. Nobody talks about it. If yeah. you talk about it, it's like you're weird or you're an outcast. And I just think that it's important, especially through music, because you're able to express so many things in like, what, two minutes, you know, and people feel it. And it's all about making people feel what you're saying. And if you have to hit on those he heavy subjects, you yeah. know, you have to talk about religion. You have to say that it's being pushed out. You have, I mean, you have to point out the important things, but it's not just about religion. It's just about what's right. And that's what Music Made really is about. We just like to think of ourselves as 
versatile and humble. I mean, I know it's very not not very humble to say you're humble. It's kind of an oxymoron there. But either way, like we just we just want to help yeah. and we want everyone to just be it's great. A, it's about it's about yeah, helping and supporting each other. Like my biggest thing is when I go to a show, I make sure all artists are gonna go on the, the stage and I'm gonna be right there and I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna support every artist because I noticed there is a lot of artists that you know they they only show up for their set and they leave. leave. I mean, we we're 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 early. all we're all we're all chasing the same dream, and I I mean I'm getting off the topic, but yeah, we're chasing the same dream. Well, that's community, bro. That's community. yeah, for sure. And like we're chasing the same dream, and I feel like we all need to work together. That's how anything's gonna work, bro. Putting like, a name on. for our city, which really hasn't been done yet through music, is um I mean is very important. So I don't know why everyone would want to battle it out and push each other away when instead we need to be working together that way all of our styles can blend and we can actually say you know and we put new mexico on the map that's an interesting ass perspective that's very humble of you i like the way you put that yeah, not battling sure. it out because that, that way you guys are always working together i don't yeah i don't want to yeah. be known uh, new mexico's already known for such negativity and why add to it why put it's more only blue meth what's just, yeah, come it's on only it's blue only meth, blue meth bro. there's we got, nothing we got the last on the <laughs> education and crime and it's just but like come on bro you can't you can't have a const you can't have one construction worker build a whole house bro you need yeah, a whole team needs. you feel me like everybody just needs to be on that same page and i feel like if everybody was on that same page Everyone this albuquerque would have blown up a long time ago bro we have a lot of talented people and it's not just in the hip-hop uh you know it's 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 metal it's uh even small like comedy dude like comedy there's like i didn't know there was like comedy slams and stuff like that bro that's cool as hell yeah i looked that up so apparently there's a comedy show almost every night do, throughout the week they do like an open mic mm -hmm. so uh right. expect to have morgan out there acting like a fucking fool i, I bought a <laughs> yes. i bought a udemy course <laughs> And I'm gonna get up there. I'm gonna go for a for a, a five minute set if I can handle a five minute set. Hey, see see how know, many bro. how bad I, I crash and burn. Yeah, fuck yeah. Let me know, bro. I want to be yeah. a heckler. Yeah, that's <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> Sit. <Pretzels>. Shush. Shush. <laughs> well, I was trying to alliterate too with the religion thing. Is I think it's cool that you guys are throwing out there, no matter regardless of people's beliefs, religious or not. Um, I think if it brings good results, it's a good thing. Um, because religion could be known for bad things, um, a lot of different things like that. But if it brings good results, it's a good thing. Um, and then bring in, bring into light of things that, um, like you said, needs to be said. Like the song that you have, the project on Spoken, mm -hmm. that's deep. Yeah. That's really deep. When you hear those lyrics and you can hear it in your voice, like you're trying to, you're trying to say something. And if people ain't listening to that, then if it they makes need them uncomfortable, like. That's even more reason for them to hear it. Right. You know, it's one of those things, again, that's just tucked away because it's uncomfortable to talk about. And that's not helping anybody. It's just, yeah. it's not doing anybody a favor. So, hell yeah, I'm going to put it out there. If my voice is going to be out there, I'm not going to waste it by talking about ass and hoes. And I mean, <laughs> get that money. I mean, honestly, it doesn't take much talent to talk about that stuff. Like, I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know how that makes you feel. Like, I, I want to know, like, wanna if I'm going to take this time to follow this artist, like, yeah. I want to know you. I want to know why, like, why am I liking you? Why? Because I want to hear that. Know, because yeah, you speak I want to hear that story. I want to see what, you, what you're feeling. I don't want to know how much money you got and how much change you got and how many whips we you got. Like, everybody goes through that, bro. Like, it's, it's definitely like, when I hear stories like Ritz, for instance, I use Ritz because Ritz is, he's a dope artist, bro. He came up like, he's 31, I think 31 when he got signed. Um, with the Yellow Wolf, uh, Launchpad. I, the first time I saw Ritz was like, dude, this dude is amazing. Like he talks about his struggles. He talks about what's real. He talks about his pain. You could feel it, just like Eminem, just like Russ. A lot of those artists, bro, like they get overlooked, bro, because they talk the truth, and and that's what's missing from this game, bro. Like, man, and let me since we just little segue here. The whole Eminem, the new one that he just put out, everyone is giving him Maybe. so much crap about it. And they're like, oh, he lost his touch. Oh, he's off. You know, he's not on beat anymore. And it's like, no, he's just not talking about how angry he is. He's not talking about F you, mom, and yeah. F you, Kim, and all this crazy stuff. He's like, you, he's he's telling you what he's feeling, and it's real. And I think it's some of the best work. And he honestly doesn't have anything to prove anymore. So yeah. well, I think the same goes that. for bands too. People get mad at bands like, oh, well, that sounds like the last album that made or you said that sounds like the last album you made. But as soon as a band starts to go above and beyond what they're used to, then people start hating on that. Like they're for, getting out of their comfort zone. Like they're for example, uh, Suicide Silence has a new album. A lot of people got, that came under scrutiny a little big time because they changed their style. 
But, you know, I like for bands. If I could listen to a couple of bands' albums in a row and they all sound different to me, that's that their creativity at work. They're a true artist and they're growing. If an artist doesn't grow and they're not trying to do something different, then they're not trying to do better. They're not trying to exactly. go out of their comfort zone, like you said, and they're not trying to progress. They're trying, they're to, trying to stay to right where they're at because it's easiest and they're already there, you know. But again, Eminem is that prime example because he has these first things that he's putting out and he's super immature and talking about dumb stuff, but we love him anyway. But and it throw, you know, it shows through his struggle. When you're rich, you can say whatever you want, Donald yeah. Trump. But once Donald he starts Trump. speaking actual truths, everyone's <laughs> trying to like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, he yeah, lost yeah. his talent. And I don't know. Well, That's why we like to switch it up as much as possible. Like, I want to keep you guessing. Like, I don't care if you yeah. like it. Like, yeah. you know, keep it on your toes. So talking about cutting edge and trying to kind of reinvent yourselves on the go, are you guys messing with video? I saw that you had your, your, your guys are doing those Southwest Cypher series. Is, series yeah. yeah. Right. And are those... uh through you guys or it's a collaboration with, uh, with shout G-Life out TV. yeah shout out g life tv and blaze their uh, production we just you know ask if we can get on or they ask us and those have been a lot of fun and i think it's just been a yeah. really great experience the quality is really good on those oh, videos yeah. and the yeah. way that the post-production is done is they've yeah he does a good job yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so what definitely. do you guys do you guys plan on doing more on youtube and stuff like that i, I actually found that there's a way to get youtube to start paying you directly like almost straightforward um after 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. So it's one of those things where I, I didn't know that there was actually a path to that. I thought for whatever reason that it, it had to be crazy numbers like a million subscribers or yeah, something like that. That's, ten- that's that's really cool though like Yeah, and and there was a lady she did a, you know, it's an awful viral video. Um I'm, I'm sure everybody's going to be looking for it now, but it's uh she got paid um like on well no, let's, so, so I think one video of in particular started out was like 100 bucks she got. And then that scaled Damn. up to like 1,000 in 4 months. And it was her doing like uh, makeup things. And there was another guy that he was real famous for doing a video where you turn off the start button, start engine, uh, uh, the keyless ignitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a vehicle and it says, do not press this, right? Well, over Christmas, for whatever reason, that got watched like so many thousands of times. And he got paid like 1800 bucks for Christmas day. Damn. Just watched his views climb. And I, I didn't know that that was so easy wow. to do, you know? So. Yeah. And, 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 and again, you say easy, but like, how does that grow? You know, and that just happened to pick up, um, I'm sure because of some sort of viral something that picked it up and kicked it around. But now, now I see the power of that. I mean, are you guys looking forward to investing in that once you guys get to the point where you're putting higher media on? Like, um, well, we, we started up a YouTube page like not too long ago. Um, that's actually where I released my first song, the life in the bottle. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to explore more. more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cause yeah. We have a video dropping, like I said earlier, uh, it's called Demons. Um, mm-hmm. My boy, uh, from uh, our in certain visuals, um, he he did it for us. You know what I mean? So we're waiting for that to finish up, and yeah, we can't wait to see it though, bro. Because that's gonna cool. Be, so yeah, that's gonna get released on YouTube then. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I was gonna segue into, like a Patreon thing. I was gonna tell you guys about. So I always try to like teach a little something at least whenever I'm on uh, a podcast with people that are growing because we're learning as we go. So Patreon, we don't have anybody on there yet. <laughs> we just, and honestly, we haven't focused on putting a campaign to it. But what's cool about Patreon is you can do exclusive stuff um, with them and it's free. So you could do like That's an exclusive cool. like video live feed when you guys go that is maybe somebody running around with a nicer camera, but running it live. Yeah. And they'd have to go to Patreon to to actually be able to get that link. So, but it's like a, a member support service. So if you have people that, you know, around you that would support you for a dollar a month, they sign up for a dollar a month and it just kind of, so if you get 10 of those, Maybe you're knocking down a bill on, I'm sure there's fucking something that $10 could go yeah. to, you know, Food. but some, some of these cats have $5 <laughs> packages, $10 a month packages, you know, and, and, uh, you, you guys could do shirts and stuff like that. So I think that's something you guys should definitely look into because, uh, we don't have, you know, anything that we're writing as consistently as you guys. I mean, we put out our podcast and we try to spotlight new Mexicans doing some badass shit, but Ooh. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys yeah, have. Yeah. You guys have the Prince Vault, you know, full of extra stuff. So I think that's that's cool, and I, th- I think you guys should definitely look into that. And in, uh, um, in the future, that way we can have somewhere for people to go support you. You know, Patreon.com. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll check that out for sure. So I think what's cool too is uh, about hip hop and rap or whatever is that the beats can change, but the style of your flow or your lyrics are the same to a degree. Like you say, you like to change it up. So I wanted to ask a question, and just I could be wrong. But I feel just by the style, yours compared to his, are you a little bit older than he is? No, I'm 24. He's 26. Okay, so you're right there around the same age. The only reason I'm I'm asking is just because um, I can't remember the song title, but it was 
It's an old school like song, the beat from an old school song. Uh, Albuquerque Live. Maybe that's the one. It's like tell I can... me what you want to do with the half tattoo. It's that, that's a me... whole old school song, bro. Yeah, we we, 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 put, we put that old school song together. It's called ABQ Live, and that has like a real old school. It was like, like a sample from like an older song from back in the day, like you know, nineties hip hop. Oh, Lauren Hill's uh, that one. Yeah, I remixed Lauren that Hill. one. It yeah. was called That Thing, but I named it That Dream. Yes. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, that's so, the remix. Go fire. Yeah, it's all, it's it wicked. I really liked it because, you know, that's an awesome song, the original to begin with. But, you know, to put your own, you know, your own flip on it. Where you at, Lauren Hill? Right. Come yeah. come back to us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really cool to hear that. And then just, and like I said, like just the style of the way that you spit your lyrics and stuff, I just kind of like felt like you were kind of coming from that era. So I was kind of like, man, she, it sounds like she could be older. And you know, not, there's nothing wrong with you being younger, but Damn, you bro, just that's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, you just got... so, you sound you sound young, bro. Yeah. Yeah. that's that's a compliment, yeah, bro. I take it. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Um, I've always been told that I was an old soul. Right, she definitely is, bro. So like, yeah. I I think and and dream differently. Than sure, people. Well, and then like and then like that the the hazy day song too, like I brought up earlier. It's just you could tell like there's there's some older influences there. What what do you think influenced you like musically from back in the day? Well, probably just all my aunt and uncles, you know, when we would get together and have our campouts on one of their properties or, you know, our mantanzas, like we would all get together and that's what we would jam. We would jam the oldies. We were heavy into like Elvis Sick. and, you know, like Sangra La, like way back in the day, you know, all those fun songs from the 50s. And I don't know. And we've just always listened to a bunch of stuff. And then with the old school hip hop, it was. That was more because of my stepdad, Robert. He was always listening to old school rap. And oh, I loved it. It was just like, well, you, you could, couldn't move. I mean, you could not move. Wait, does that make sense? Not, not you yeah. could not not, not move. <laughs> <laughs> when you listen to it, you know? It's like so. that movie, Happy Feet. Once you hear the music, you just got to start done. Da, 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 you, could, he, you could definitely hear it. Like, you could hear your influences. Well, I, I could. Um, oh. When you're listening to that stuff, you could kind of tell you got some old school, like, influences. Um, and Gilly, I feel like you kind of like stay on the, on the new age, new school stuff, but, yeah. um, she, she actually like, like inspired me. That's like, that's where that ABQ live came from. Cause right. she inspired me towards that song. She showed me the beat and I was like, dude, if you haven't heard it, check no, it out. I've bro. heard them all. They're like, all great. I it think, has I'm, that load rider yeah, sound. Right. You know I mean, that, that one I love to perform, bro. Like it's the, one with, could, the, it's the one with the horns, she, you can hear the horns, not the horns, like BB, but like the air horns, the music, the instruments, right? Mm -hmm. It's like really horn yeah. heavy. It's like yeah, really horn yeah. heavy in the beat. Breaker, breaker. Yeah, yeah. You get the horns. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Bro, that one's that one's dope to do live. But yeah, she she brought that song. We were chilling and drinking and shit. And she was like, yo, babe, I've been holding on this beat for a little bit. You know what like I mean? Three years. And she was like, <laughs> like when I say a little bit, I mean a long time. That's just like my slang. But um, yeah, she came to me and she's like, babe, we're all drinking and we're like little buzz and shit. And like she brings this beat to me and I fell in love with it, bro. That whole feel, like, it reminds me of, like, you know, my dad and, you know, like, like the, you know, older peeps and shit getting into that shit and, like, you know, the Chevys and the Impalas and shit like that, bro. But, yeah, she definitely comes with that, with that flavor, bro. So. <laughs> I like it. But you guys make a good team. You guys collab on your songs. Thank you. You can tell you really compliment each other. Thanks. It's a good fit. This is cool. I mean, you know, like, uh, like, we're learning a little bit about, you know, what others can hear from our music. Like and what they're getting from it. Well, if you yeah, ever need somebody really to cool, review bro. your song or you want some kickback, I mean, I'm I'm an honest guy. If I don't like it, like I probably I'm gonna be honest, I probably didn't like a hundred percent of every song. But there's parts of every song that I did like, and I mean, and that speaks huge, man. Because like I said, I'm not at heart a hip hop fan, rap fan. Um, I like the older school school shit. That's why that appealed to me because I like the older school shit. Yeah. Um, but I'm more of a metal guy and not a reggae guy, so like I tend to go go towards those style lines. Um, but revolutions, sure. my shit, dude. Bro. There's so many dope <laughs> reggae bands out there. Still bro. haven't saw them live yet, bro. Like I've heard they've fucking put on kick-ass shows. So now, so talking into that a little bit, what do you think? What do you guys think about like reggae bands that are mixing it, like Dirty Heads? Have you guys heard of any Dirty Heads? No, but I, I think that'd be dirty though. Like hip hop and reggae, hip hop and yeah. go hand in sure. hip hop and reggae for sure. Process. Yeah, they totally. Well, Dirty Heads, Dirty Heads, pull it off, legit. Like they can, oh, they got some really cool flows and yeah. some raps and 
they they mix it together well. You guys need to check them out. Right, sure I think it'd be a cool little influence. Maybe you guys can take some inspiration from that because. Um, like you said, we're in bootcase, so you can do whatever the fuck you want, dude. <laughs> dude, I'm still trying to get Morgan into the fucking booth, bro. Cause what do you like, do? I'm trying to get a song with some heavy metal vocals and do? shit, bro. Like, we about to. There's no, I mean, that stuff's Morgan easy for me. Anything outside of that, I'm not. I can't. I can scream, bro, because I'm really good at being fucking loud. But I can't. <laughs> I can't sing for shit anymore, bro. Too many years of uh. I would call that, it running. Was that at the compound when the mic one time like fucking cut out or something? You're like, fuck you, I don't need a mic. You're like, <laughs> like, I got fuck it. Well, I got loud. I, I got to where I get loud enough to where I I almost couldn't it would hurt my fucking ears, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I used to yell at the wall and then it got too loud and I couldn't yell. Because we were well, guitar. Yeah, yeah, dude. When we were in this little studio, that bleeding eardrum that we were talking about earlier, that studio was so tiny. And dude, that shit was a little ass, like uh, little ass room. All, all like of us trying hallway. to fit in and shit. So, Here comes Morgan on the drum. I couldn't do nothing, bro. <laughs> but no, if you want to imagine how this place looked, like you walk in this old warehouse. It used to be an open floor plan. They built a bunch of like matchstick fucking buildings, little rooms that are all attached by just a little bit of drywall and some nails, I hope screws maybe and uh all these like ghetto electricity setups to where people were plugging in like high-end Fucking... gear so they'd rent out these little rooms to bands and the, you know air quotes it was safe and that's where they'd lock all their stuff so props to the guy like i'd say for the majority of the time like yeah. it, i guess it worked out but he held it down there for was a while. always yeah. shit going on like you you'd pop the circuit breakers it was all ghetto like that guy was a fucking loon but Bro, it was... long story short you have some of the best memories of your life because you could walk down that hallway and hear five six ten different bands yeah and that, playing. that was one of the cool things man is that you're able to go into these other rooms and you didn't have just metal though you had yeah. what was in that first room it was just like a like a techno breakdown like singing with yeah. like a banjo feel yeah bro yeah. it was crazy dude well, then like, there was those guys that were right next to us for the, the longest time i don't remember their name but their room looked like they'd lived there for 10 years like they had shit up <laughs> and down the walls they had beer they had all i mean they were doing all all manner of, yeah. of nefariousness and it was <laughs> for sure. and it, it was awesome though because i got exposed to stuff in there that um it really made you think beyond the radio and beyond the typical media you know and i think influences like that are cool because in Albuquerque, it's one of the few places I've seen where people will try shit. Even if it, even if you're not making money at it, bro, like people will dig in, bro. And you see a lot of good things come out of it. Like, I mean, it's one thing to say that that you guys are trying hip hop, but you're trying hip hop in a place that's not notorious for putting out like high end record deals or anything like that. Like, we don't have anybody from Albuquerque. I mean, can you think of any? Nah, but it will happen. There's a lot of influence. It will happen from for Albuquerque. Sure, yeah. Not to say there's not, but. Yeah. You know, so that's something to aspire to, definitely. And the fact that you guys are chasing your dream, pursuing that greatness, you know, I got to plug that Thank shit in you. there because that's, that's yeah. why you guys are on the, the podcast because I know it takes more. You're not making money hand over fist. I mean, you're probably paying more than you're spent, than you're making. Yeah, everybody and, got to take a loss, though. I mean, that's, that's, it, that develops you know, greatness, bro. And I feel that a lot. Yeah. It pays to play. I like that shit. <laughs> telling you, bro. I have all kinds of cool quotes at the end of this show, bro. <laughs> you see all kinds of memes running around and shit. Right? <laughs> Dreams aren't all about rainbows and puppies, you know. It's a lot of sacrifice and a lot of doing of what you, you know, what you don't want to do yeah. just because you know you have to. Otherwise, what are you really doing? What are you really chasing? Well, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, and and the and the idea of wanting to do it as a music as a business venture as well as like a music thing. Like, what? How long have you been at it? Like three years? Well, um, yeah, about three three four years now. Yeah, but it. We just barely started talking about really turning it into a business about a year and a half ago is when we really started changing gears and doing all of our different avenues. So that's, I, I would say, about a year and a half ago. But we've been doing it. It was just more for us and family, you know, listen to our songs. And then we got now, a lot of yeah. good feedback. And now it's just, just coming, it's just coming into a point where it's like, this is going to become a life, bro. It's going to lifestyle, you know what I mean? Like, So, so we're going to find you guys on iTunes under Music Made. Yes, uh, not yet. Not but yet. But yeah, but, soon. So that's what. But we, and then we're gonna look at Google Music for music yes. made, music made, music made, Spotify and legit. Stuff like okay. That. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Because yeah. I mean, that's that's where we're at. But podcasts are treated totally different than music. So I want to make sure that that when we go to look, I want to make sure that's what we're we're hunting for. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, bro. Thanks, that's awesome, yeah. bro. Um, but yeah, it's just like it goes back to your question, like how I got started with music in general. Um, <laughs> when I was like seven years old, bro, like. I used to get my mom's pots and pans and throw them after she washed it and shit. I throw them all over the floor, make my own little drum set right here. You know what I'm saying? So I started like, yeah, my mom was so mad, bro, because my mom's old school. You know what I mean? So is my dad. 
And like, but music, I've always had that ear for, you know what I mean? Rhythm. I've always wanted to do music my whole life, bro. I had dreams like since I was a little kid that I'd be in front of millions, bro. And slowly but surely it's coming to reality, which is amazing feel, bro. Like to see people in front of you just, just recording you, like vibing to your music. Yeah, that's a really cool feeling. You can see them them singing your words already, bro. Like trips you up. Word. Like, should I keep going or do I let them go? <laughs> it, it's it's amazing feeling, bro. It's like, but yeah, dude. Um, just just by sound, bro. I've, I've always like, I will walk past and I will just like even hit stuff just to see what they sound like. You know what I mean? Because I mean, I li- I like sound, bro. I like, yeah. I'd always walk in like a pattern, just, like make sure like my you know like I'd have to hit my left foot at the right time. <laughs> like you know, I always did that. I'd pat my legs, make beats all the time, like. Yeah, music has just always kind of been there, so I can relate to That's that. That's why we're music made. So I'm bro. playing the I'm mm. drummer, so I'm used to like banging on shit and, <laughs> in the car. I'll do, 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 yeah, just tapping on shit. The dashboard drums. The drums. I think that would be a lot of fun. It is. It's so much fun. It's All not right. the. Uh, it's not the coolest instrument when your parents don't want you to practice. Oh yeah. You no, know, because yeah. you can. Oh, your neighbors. Yeah, because you know with the clarinet or some shit, you can put them in a room and they're like <laughs> making some fucked up noises in the back. <laughs> Sound like someone's. Choking a goose or some shit huh. in the back room, <laughs> but, but with the drums, it's just so it's just so loud and in your face. You're just like, but it's yeah, so yeah, much bro. fun. That's why I thought when they came up with the electric drum set, with like like that's the fucking coolest thing ever because you could keep that shit in your headphones and you could you could be like you're at a live show, bro. You get that that kick that do do like you're like whoa. That's how I feel when we go. <laughs> you know I mean? like in a coliseum type. <laughs> that's how I feel when we go to the guitar center. I just like start playing with all these drum sets. I'm like, I'm a rock star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she gets down, bro. Yeah, she'd be like, so <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Fun. Yeah. That's really cool because I have a lot of fun. And it's cool when when people can cross over and play instruments. Like I went the last reggae show we went to was uh um um Iration, Catastro, and what was it? Their tri- uh Fortunate Youth. And some dude, those guys blew it up. But what was cool is um I think it was Fortunate Youth. All their people were tra- trading instruments. Like the guy would go sit in the, in the drums and the drummer would come back and pick up the guitar and the keys guy would go over here and he'd start singing and playing the bass and they just kept rotating. That's dope, bro. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? And it was, it was bad as fuck though because they were just, it all, went, it all went together well. That's when, it- and I've never ever seen that in my Like I've seen like the drummer come up and maybe play a guitar or like the guitarist will bring a mic and yeah. all the guitar guys in the singing. Yeah. I never really heard him sing because he only sings on that one song. Right. But when they're constantly doing this, you know, musical chairs thing, uh, pun intended, musical chair, musical chairs. Like yeah. I thought it was funny. Yeah, bro. Uh, <laughs> See, like, I, that's the type of shit that like brings you back in the days though. Like when Marcos and Nano and like, you know, John and Eric Morgan fucking when we used to jam and shit. Like, I play guitar. That was my main thing. But, like, you know, I could go into the bass and then, right. you know what I mean? Like, you'd have fucking Marcos from the guitar to the fucking drums. Like, we were, for, we were very versatile when it came to instruments. For the record, fun. I can't play a fucking thing. Yeah, bro, but I, you could I keep mean, a beat, remember, bro? You got on the drums that... By myself. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's just all be honest, though. I'm not going to lie to anybody out there. I tried to do some more things, but I can kind of put words on microphone. This is about as far as I've gotten. You see the evolution? I'm still doing the same fucking thing. <laughs> Never picked up another. Ins- I can do harmonica, bro. We started doing that. Yeah. Yeah. When you well, guys, uh, mine just goes- didn't you guys throw a <laughs> reggae band there for a while or some shit? Like, uh, you guys had- it was a, it was us fucking around in the, in the garage. It wasn't, it yeah. wasn't much, but We're we had still, a couple like, jams just, that came just, out of it. it. I would say yeah. like, it was kind of deft tonesy. Because I remember when I went reggae. to your, your crib in Las Lunas and stuff, you guys are back there jamming and shit. Like, <laughs> It's like we alive, have this one sure. song that we told Spider like pull out some Nugent shit, and he was just started going off, and our <laughs> like our corresponding jam session just came out bad as fuck. I mean, once you like you as you know, as you start jamming with people, you just start getting that rhythm, yeah, and you know sure. when he's about to change, I'm gonna do the drum fill, I'm gonna hit the cymbals. Like yeah. you just you start feel like vibing, and you start feeling that shit. Yeah. So it was just a cool jam session that all of a sudden it just went together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't uh, he remake it too? He recorded. I didn't it do nothing. No, dude, Spider no, uh, played every yeah. instrument and remade that I, song perfect. Yeah, I heard yeah. the recording. I think he uh, when he did it in Florida, I believe when he recorded all the instruments and he, yeah. he was like, "This is uh, the original song that we had did." It's shrug, 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 shrug. Right? 
I don't yeah, know why I, I always want to call it on broke because that was like the basic theme of it. Like I just came up with some bullshit at the time, but he remembered the whole fucking song. Yeah, we had just like when he did Trojan Purgatory. I was like, what the fuck? Dude, he uses a tape recorder and sets it. Well, that's what we were using. And that yeah. tape recorder, I got onto a CD or something and passed it to him. And I guess he had it floating around. And it's cool to like see that vision and then know where you came from. And then like it's cool to see that because. It's like reverse well, yeah. We, we've backed off from instruments. Now we're just talking to the fucking microphone. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool because you guys have like that, you know, like the the behind, I mean, the background is what I'm looking for. But yeah. you guys have the background to like do what you're doing. And that's cool because you can't just go on and do these podcasts and not know what the fuck you're all talking yeah. about. You know, and that's what's cool because I've listened to some of your podcasts already. And Thanks, bro. Good shit. Appreciate like, that, man. Good well, shit, bro. We need this shit. Yeah. Well, with the music yeah, yeah. ones, I think is cool because New Mexicans, uh, we just kind of lived in that, you know, talking about bleeding eardrum and then the stuff that we've messed around with on the side. Never had any level of success, bro, at all. Just always been just doing it for the love of it, you know, and I that's think- That's the best That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's it, you know, but again, we were, I mean, we couldn't even play, right? Uh, places that served alcohol because we were all underage yeah, young like a motherfucker bro yeah, yeah. I, you're like you the oldest one out. i think you're 21 and the rest i was, of us not, was I was, like i was like 18 dog really yeah, i'm not that much older than you bro <laughs> <laughs> i've always thought you're way older bro 29 like, 29 29 30 26 yeah yeah, yeah Weird. Only, only a few years older i remember i just got out of west mesa high when it, when we played a show there okay, there we i was go. like oh damn oh damn i'll go back but i didn't hey, know bro, anybody we, but we fucking fun. wrecked that shit it was fun it was fun as compound is like memories bro like just the stage and the people, the mosh pits, bro. Yeah, for get the fuck over here doing oh, mosh dude. pit. And Jumping people down, just follow, bro, and mosh you could just see that ridiculous. shit. Ridiculous. It's fun though. I almost got caught in one at the oh, what was it? Um, yeah, corn quite, and it's not a storm. Rob you don't get zombie. caught in it. What is that? No, because I didn't know I was coming <laughs> back. A tornado, bro. I was coming just back with my job, drinks, bro. and it was the Rob Zombie and Corn concert. <laughs> And I was like looking for my peeps, looking for him. And then like I was like, there's nobody standing here. And I noticed I was in the middle of the circle. Oh shit. And everyone, shit. I just noticed everyone started getting uh, super hyped. And I was like, that's I like the get that's out. like the wall should, of death that you just started busting the flow right in the middle. You just started <laughs> throwing it down. Uh, and see what happens, you know? No way, I was terrified. <laughs> well, the wall of death, isn't that what they call uh Lamb of God? Isn't that what they used to do they're not until al- people they're not, they're not allowed to allowed say allowed yeah. to do well, it, but then when they say Y'all motherfuckers know, know what, to, what do. to do. Yeah, they know what to That's do. That's all you need. There was one I went and saw Black Dahlia not too long ago. Shout out to Black Dahlia. I can't cool. wait for you guys to get on our podcast, Black Dahlia Murder. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but I saw I saw you guys at a uh, uh, Sunshine, and uh, it was probably one of the best shows. And I just can't the skill of that band. But there was another one that came on, and of course my brain is not going to allow me to remember who it is. But they've been around since forever. Nail Bomb age like long, long, long time. They've been around a while. But uh, they had a big following, and I, I was really... thinking down or something like no, that. No, it wasn't even like that stoner rock. Like it was heavy metal, like stuff oh, okay. on that. It was, you know, oh. just just grilling it, bro. So Damn. they go to they go, and I was surprised because these cats are much older than than uh, um, most. And and I thought the Wall of Death was a younger generation thing. No, no, oh, sir. So that they been they opened lot, it up huh? right there, dude. And this wasn't even what uh, six months ago, maybe eight months ago that I went to that show. And they open it up, man. And even the sunshine now, they still do it, man. Wall to wall, they back everybody up. And that's that's what I was talking about, just for everybody that doesn't know. Uh, you know, you got these all ages shows, which really means you got to be 13 or older. And you can be at these shows and these little venues. Sunshine Theater is one of them. Joe Anderson works. Beautiful, beautiful little venue. But we talked about it quite a bit. But you're in there and you have one of these fucking walls of death and there's nothing like it because you really can't not participate if you're not at the bottom. Like, yeah. yeah. yeah and uh, and I'm, I'm either going to land on the floor or yeah. I'm going to make this motherfucker yeah. hit the floor. But I... Yeah. yeah. And, and the way that... I'll that, just scream you know, and like go in the fetal <laughs> position. Fetal position. Stomping on me. Well, the majority, <laughs> yeah, and the majority of the time, Tuck if you're not if, if you're not at like a big outdoor thing, you know, a lot of times people are, are smart enough to grab you and pick you up because like you'll get broken arms if you're just... if you. If you just ball up, you got to be careful. Like you could yeah. get hurt, you know. I'm so you got to get up. <laughs> I just not go. no stay up at the top and drink. That's what you yeah. do. See or stay oh, in the yeah, bar. That's me. But I'll no, I, I got a video of it. It's on YouTube actually of them doing a wall of death still, and it was just it blew my mind. I mean, the whole crowd separated left and right. And it, not Damn. fucking yet. Not fucking yet. Straight run so into great. each other. And they just bam. You know, this little and it, the sunshine's small. You know, like oh, yeah. so going to the fucking uh, on the launch pad too. It's even a smaller place, and they yeah. still go fucking crazy yeah. there. Yeah. That's it's actually crazy. my favorite venue to perform at. Yeah. It's nice. Pit. That's such a cool spot. Yeah, yeah. shout out to the sound guy that works there, bro. Like his sound is amazing. Like Definitely for real, one of the best, one of the best that we've performed at. So, yeah. shout out really to the sound guy, whoever you are. <laughs> so, when, so when you guys start getting your shows together and stuff, how how does that process work? 
Do you guys just kind of reach out to somebody or does somebody come looking for you? How yeah. do you, how do you get both. your shows together? Yeah. A little bit of both. Yeah. yeah, we've been having more people lately come and approach us and ask for us to be on the show. Um, but, I mean, we've asked before too. I mean, you know, you close mouth or what is it? Close mouths Never don't get, get fed. fed. Yeah. You know, so yeah. if you want it, you got to go for it. And the, everyone that we've asked has always responded really well and we've been able to perform. So it's a little yeah. bit of both. That kind of speaks to what we do too, because most people that we talk to on the podcast, we have we've had to approach them and be like, "Hey, um, you guys want to do this?" Some of them don't even know what a podcast is. Um, I mean, we've we've had a couple of no's, um, but we're reaching for the stars. On Doesn't some of those. hurt if you try to, but we can't knock you off. We're your reaching shine. for the stars for those. So you know what I mean. So I mean, to be told no by. Somebody that's way up here, but just to get them to respond to you is huge. Yeah, bro. Eventually, they're going to hit you up and be like, yo, like, I need you guys to do this for me. And you guys are going to be like, you know, what's what's the like, this is this is my chart. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Dog, and, and and shout out to the cats that, uh, yeah, as of this writing, um, have uh, uh, actually written <laughs> yeah, us back. Baby. And <laughs> even though you've given us a no, it's a very humble and, and thoughtful no. So thank you to all of you. You know who you are. But uh, yeah. one of these days, thank you. We're getting, we're getting water over here. This yeah. is this is the best podcast. Water. All you future guests, water is an, uh, an excellent yeah, thing to put it. down for. I have hot tea. Yeah. I have, I have hot some tea hot well. tea. Do you like some, some some crumpets? Some crumpets as well. Some crackers. Some butter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, bro. Um, the launch pad is definitely like the best venue we performed at because so far. I mean, there's a yeah, so far, but like, ah, uh, like I don't mean to bash on anybody, bro, because like. I mean, I'm not like I love I love everybody, but like you know, some of the sound like I don't know who's doing it, bro. Like you, that's important, bro, for a show. You gotta have the best sound. Like, well, even some of the big shows that come through, you'll notice that something is lacking a little bit. Um, yeah. some of the bands sound better than the others, dude. Yeah, and that could attest to a lot of different things. Would, but, uh, but it's to hard go. too, you know. Like even when Ritz came down and he we he was yeah. performing at was, El Rey a few I months was, ago, we went and we were stoked, but the sound was just not dude. there. And I was he even had to stop, you know. He was like, what I'm about to say is going to be really unprofessional, but what is going on with the sound? Like, and you know, and that's one of those things too, like if we're going to bring people who are that well known out, like we got to make sure that our ish is on point and I just feel like everyone's like, "Oh, they're coming," and then they don't want to work on the rest yeah, of the yeah. stuff. You it's know? it's crazy, bro. Because like now we're getting a bad reputation, and then what? Ritz yeah. is gonna say that, that, and then other artists are gonna. Well, be like, oh, see, well, they don't have the that's sound. when the guys look at yeah. the dude and they're like, "And that was the day that Tom packed his stuff up." <laughs> yeah, it was gone. But yeah, bro. Like like I've said, like I've seen him at Launchpad and shit, like in Yellow Wolf, and I was very amazed, bro. But then when I heard him at the Ray, like I don't know, I wasn't really. And it's too it's one of those things thrilled. too, like. We're not Ritz status, you know, as of yet, but it's hard because we're putting everything that we have. We take the time to rehearse. We take the time to do what we need to do to prepare this show so that we are taken serious. We want to be taken professionally. That's why, you know, we don't drink before the show. You know, most people go up on stage with alcohol. You know, we wait until after because we want to be taken seriously, but it's just... It's just one of those things, like, if we put everything we have on the stage, but the sound is off, people aren't going to get what we're trying to portray, you know? Yeah. They're not going to get the full view of and what a, music yeah. actually do. And so to that part right there, to what she's saying, is that a lot of people that don't do music and that don't know the background on, like, what we do, they're going to think, like, oh, well, that sound is their fault. They're the ones that did it. You know what I mean? They don't think about, like, there's so many parts to music that there's a sound guy, you know what I mean, that... And then you got your artists, you know, it all comes up to, to like, especially if we're doing a show, it comes up to the sound guy because yeah. that's what's going to make the shit rock. Because if you go to like a what? Um, let me see something that you guys like. Um, a Lamb of God show, bro. And you guys like the, the mics are off and you don't hear the drums and the guitars are really low and then the vocals are really loud. You guys are going to be like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, it happens so constantly. Like you get mad, bro. Because and, and with metal, you have to it, tune shit perfect because right. you're not going to hear fucking any vocals or all vocals. Right? Yeah. And, and no like, and no instruments like it, it's it's, it's a big it's a big important part, bro. It is, but you have to be committed to actually doing it. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to show up. I'll do sound. And then, yeah. you know, we're, we're on set. We're like, <laughs> yeah. the mic and the sound yeah, bro. Be found. We're like, OK, we, we had we had a, we had to stop a show before because like the sound guy wasn't even 
even in the building, bro. You know what I mean? Like, well, I had to stop. I was like, I gotta cut this out, bro. Yeah. Well, that, it sucks for you Dude guys because you guys put your heart and your soul and you're you're putting all this into what you're doing, and then it's overshadowed by a technical difficulty. Yeah, bro. I mean, Dude. I would be the same thing with you yeah, guys. Bro. I'd be like. You know, fuck this guy. Yeah. About to be outside, son. Yeah, for Put real, Put your dick bro. beaters up. Let's dance. Because like, like, eh. we, we want people to enjoy our music just as much as we enjoy our music. You yeah, know what I mean? That's the whole point. So, like, if they ain't getting the feel, like, what we know it should sound like, it's they ain't going to know us. us. Yeah, like, it's disappointing to us because yeah. we feel like we didn't do them any service. Like, we didn't put on a great show, even though we knew we did. But the sound was off, so they couldn't hear us. You know, our family or our friends who go to the show... You know, they'll be like, oh, you guys killed it, but it was kind of hard to hear you. And I was, you know, and that's always disappointing yeah. to hear. It's when you hear that but, is like, you know, like something's not well, it's right. It's like the guitar but. player is getting into it and he's playing his solo. He's like, rah, 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 but to everybody out there, I ain't hearing a motherfucking thing. Yeah. And he's like this, you know, he's, yeah. he's putting his guitar his... bass, <laughs> yeah. you know, and he's playing, but you can't hear nothing but coming out. But that's like, a talent man. in itself is you have to keep going even when you know it's not Yeah, yeah, right. for sure. You know that something's off, but you know what? You're up there. This is your time to shine. Like, don't waste it. And yeah, you can't hear the guitar so solo, but you see that he's into it. You see that he's shredding it. And people are still going to vibe until they get the 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 vocals or the music back going. You know what for I mean? For sure. Like, yeah, that's, that's one advice. Gotta, like, they, if people notice that you're feeling it, they're going to feel it. Like if I could give advice to somebody that's new and starting with this hip hop or music in general, just don't stop. Like when you're on stage and you see like somebody fucked up or the sound's not like how you think it should be, like don't stop. Just keep going. Just give it like 100% because that's an, an, another important part. You know what I mean? So Because, you know, and eventually you'll hopefully end up in a big coliseum with your own sound guy who knows your preference and, you know, your own light dude and everything will be under music made and, you know, and then we don't have to worry about those problems. But right now it's all about paying your dues and taking the shows and the opportunities. Where it's fun. Play. It's fun. So so speaking to that, what are you guys' – so you're, you're building your brand. You're, you guys are going to acquire more people for your, for your group. Can I call it a group? What would you call it? A posse? A yeah, clique? You could call it a group. Okay. Family. I don't know if you had a family. I, I would go sure. more family. Yeah. Sure. So, sure. So, look into the future. What are you guys going to have in the immediate future? You guys want to build your group more? You want to start making your brand more? What else do you guys got on the horizon? Well, we, we do have a lot of ideas um, coming up with new merchandise from Confident Clothing. So, um, we're not going to get into many details because those are on the hush-hush right now, you know? Can't give out our secrets. But um, we will have a bunch of merchandise going on. We do have photo shoots coming up. We have videos lined up. Um, Any lots tours? of competitions. Not as yet of yet, but we have been looking into it. And it's definitely in the near future because it's it's a it's a good opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's definitely coming soon. One of these days. Close, hopefully, like tomorrow. Nah. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> nah, but soon. We we want to do tours. That's like, cause like I'm from New Mexico, uh, New Mexico, born and raised, Albuquerque. You know what I mean? Like, but I want to be able to explore other towns. Like we did uh, Los Alamos, and we got a lot of love, bro. Like it was amazing feeling. Nobody like, in there. Everybody's knows, cool. Everybody's fucking cool in Los Alamos. Amazing. Shout out Los Alamos, like yeah, Los Alamos, yeah. my bad. But thanks shout out to Mike you. Feeder and uh, Nick Allen for getting us out there. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you guys. Much love. So but, that's like some place we would want to go back. But but I think as a tour, though, I think we we want to start with the uh, New Mexico tour. We want to go to the cities here, start yeah. local. That way, we you know people know like we 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 we, bleh, we really want to be involved with our city and we want to like no, help in huge. different avenues yeah. to get yeah. them on the map. We can only get better together, like you guys were saying. Yes, sir, yeah. for sure. Well, this was a fucking this was a good podcast. Yeah, I like how I, I like how I feel like we really really get get into music made and you know, KV and Gilly Soul. Thanks yeah. for inviting us. You know what I mean. Yeah, like, sorry for the technical difficulties. We're working out some snakes. So. That's cool. <laughs> Much I love am, to you, bro. Spider, because you do your thing. I know. I know. I bring you some delicious Much treats love, of audio brother. that you yeah. you spit out a, a solid gold bar. I don't know how the fuck you do it, buddy, but uh, yeah. So I guess this is number eleven. Twelve, I believe. Right. This will be twelve shit so if you want to follow i've been uh, following you guys yeah no i appreciate it thank yeah, you yeah sure. yeah you got to keep me on point because man i don't even there's a lot of this going on dude it's it's busy it's not i mean i'm sure it's easier than what you guys have to go through but to have to multitask to fit somebody else's schedule to be like hey can i show up at your house and put <laughs> microphones in your face is that cool you know <laughs> like you know Anytime. but 
time. <laughs> but we're getting, we're getting, like you said, we're getting a little bigger. So if you guys want to uh, check out this podcast uh, or, or uh, support our podcast, we're at uh, facebook.com forward slash APOB media. And then, of course, you can always type in uh, uh, Music Made. And then that'll lead you to Gilly Soul and KB. And uh, uh, did I say Music Soul? Did I fuck music that up? Made. Music Made, made and Gilly sure. Soul. That's cool. Music, <laughs> music Soul and Gilly Made. It comes from the nah, soul. Music comes from the soul. I'm changing soul, your whole so. brand right now, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to change it. Nah, but yeah, we appreciate you guys. It's, it's, it's cool. About well, and people kind of know you guys now a little bit more. And they can, you know, more than just now, those people in Los Alamos be able to hear the story and maybe get a little more fangirl club going, right? Yeah. You guys will be able to- <laughs> Well, wait, no fangirls. Oh, you know Sorry. what I mean. Um, <laughs> so you try to get me in the doghouse and shit, bro. Wait like d- I thought I it was spoke. over, bro. <laughs> well, no, no. Well, I get, I get, I got yelled at because I was fangirling on Jason Hill on the podcast I had because all of his <laughs> acting stuff. I was like, I was trying so hard to like wait, you know, in the podcast while we were talking. I was building up to it, and then right as we started talking, I was like, "All right, dog, talk to me about all this. Who are these actors you've talked to? You know, like I got all jelly, bro." And I was like. Ooh! You know, it's like, <laughs> that's funny, man. So I get, you know, I I think that uh, it's it's cool because I'm sure that when people get touched by your guys' music, then you know, especially to know your New Mexicans, they they get that same, you know, the for lack of a better yeah. word, the fan yeah, attitude. Yeah, side. I got I, a big shout out to all the fans and the family that supported us. Uh, that means a lot. Like without you guys, like I said, we we wouldn't be nothing. Like you guys make it possible to do what we do, and I really appreciate that shit from the bottom of my motherfucking heart. That's right. It's exciting to see you got a new follower. I'm like, oh man, like it's it's really cool. It's not like we take anything for granted. So we're really excited for anyone who's t- you know willing to take the time to hear our words. So um, once again, I'm the real KB, but you can find my music on SoundCloud.com slash Kristen K R I S T Y N dash Barella B like boy A R E L A. Mm-hmm. Check it out. <laughs> And you can find Gilly So. Just go to Google and just type in Gilly So, and all my stuff will pop up. So fancy, yeah. excuse me. I'm sorry. I just want to make it easier. Yeah, whatever. Gilly So G, as in Gil. <laughs> 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 All right, but Gilly So. And check it out. Yeah, check it out. And once again, Facebook, the Chosen Ones Music Made. You'll see the MME logo. We'll be posting all of our merchandise on there with links so you could purchase it through PayPal. Just be patient with us, and yeah. we'll keep delivering. So, now if I want to tell any of the listeners out there, mm-hmm. listen to every one of y'all's songs. Like, if you don't find one that you like, you're bound to find something that you like. Yeah. Like I said, straight up, both for me to you, I may not have enjoyed every song all the way through, but there's something from every song that I liked. So, big props to you guys, and I'm glad to thank you, thank you, and make it happen. Yeah, uh, yeah appreciate feedback. it. Like I said, it's really cool yeah. to hear yeah. that. I like most feedback. Don't like to discuss. Yeah. You know, other people. So I don't know. It's just cool. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye. Much love. Out. Taking a brief, ladies and gentlemen, I am the veteran. Feel the venom straight through your veins. I'm not a human, I'm feeling some type of way. Feel the spirit rise. Hear what happened to the nice guy. They threw his heart in the dirt and then they stepped on it. Like a floor man, they said, Welcome on it. What's the purpose? Is it really worth it? I ask God. I'm trapped in a tornado, I see the eye. What a beautiful sky, but on the outside, it's a disaster. Like, where did my soul go? I'm so cold. Like a feet of a penguin, don't slip. I see you sinking like quicksand We about to blow up I ain't talking about Iraq Fuck all the chit chat This is the blueprint This music's my DNA I'm saying but I'm more insane These characters in my brain I guess I'm dirty with the wordplay I guess I'm dirty with the wordplay Albuquerque, New Mexico raised I guess I'm dirty with the wordplay Music made, yeah we don't play I've waited long enough, I know my time has come No more procrastinating, no more waiting, this shit is dumb I'm coming back to reality, stronger than royalty The Yomi is gone, she was buried alive She didn't leave a note, show no signs A secret that was kept between me, myself and I Have no reason to lie, my fuel, your supply But don't ask me why and don't act surprised You know what you were up against, you need a stronger defense And you still won't win, one bar alone will throw you into oblivion You won't know what to do, I have risen from the ashes And hey, I have something to prove, call me a bitch that don't mean shit 
it just means every move I make you're watching it Jealousy's the greatest compliment There's nothing you can say that can bother me Cool as a cucumber, no longer a newcomer My voice will be heard I guess I'm dirty with the wordplay My voice will be heard Albuquerque, New Mexico raise I guess I'm dirty with the wordplay My voice will be heard Mama, mama, music made.